Hello, my name is Dr. Claire Johnson and I've written a book about lucid dreaming. This comes out of more than 20 years of academic and personal research into lucid dreaming and it's called Llewellyn's Complete Book of Lucid Dreaming, a comprehensive guide to promote creativity, overcome sleep disturbances and enhance health and wellness. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the book and what's in it. Part one is about how to lucid dream. Now, lucid dreaming is a learnable skill, and this section takes a highly practical, in-depth, scientific look at how you can experience for yourself the tremendous excitement of waking up in a dream. We look at the importance of daytime lucidity training to cultivate a lucid mindset and how we can also use our sleeping bodies to trigger lucidity with tips for the best reality checks to increase your lucid dreaming frequency. And I'll also explore the nightly gateway to lucid dreams, which is known as hypnagogic imagery. So this is pre-sleep imagery that you can follow and watch and stay conscious with while you're actually falling asleep so that you can directly enter a lucid dream. But once we become lucid inside a dream, how do we stay lucid for long enough to really enjoy the dream and be able to explore all the possibilities of lucid dreaming? Well, I'll share with you my clear lucidity technique and explore many different ways of stabilizing the dream and hanging on to dream lucidity. And the other question I explore in this section is, should we control our dreams? Now, there's this myth that uh, lucidity is all about dream control, but it really doesn't have to be. So I explore passive approaches to lucid dreaming, as well as um, how to become what I call a dream magician. So exploring ways that we can actively guide dreams and discover the ways that our thoughts and intentions will just naturally impact upon the dream. Then we'll get up close and friendly with the lucid dream body. How does it feel? What's it made of? And what can we do with it? We'll look at how disabled people dream, how they can benefit from lucid dreaming, and also how to transcend the laws of physics that only exist inside our own heads when we are lucid dreaming. To complete this first part of the book, I'll then move into the fascinating territory of lucid dream figures. How do we respond to them? What does it mean when there's violence in a lucid dream? We'll look at how conscious lucid dream figures are. And we'll look at the zombie-like ones, the super-aware ones, and we'll consider the value of lucid dream mentors or guides. Part two of the book explores lucid dreaming to promote creativity, skill and pleasure. Who wouldn't wish for a creativity elixir? Well, lucid dreams offer us just that. When we wake up inside a dream, we're as close as we can get to the burgeoning creativity of our dreaming mind. But what if you don't get lucid as much as you'd like to? Luckily, everybody can actually lucid dream while awake. So in this section, I'll share my transformative lucid writing technique. And you'll have the opportunity to discover that when we enter lucid trance states and practice lucid dream play, we are lucid dreaming while awake to unleash our creativity, transform our nightmares and extract healing gifts from our dreams. Then we'll dive into the highly physical world of improving sports skills through lucid dreams and we'll discover the science of how it all works. We we'll put on our artist overalls and get dreamily creative, exploring how to turn original ideas and imagery into art. And we'll also learn how lucid dreaming can help us to solve problems and life issues. Anyone who's intrigued by the sexual possibilities of lucid dreaming will be happy to know that in this section of the book, we'll explore everything from orgasms to ethics and from creativity to transcendence. I'll also share practical guidance on how to create a fabulous lucid dream sex life. Part three of the book explores how to assist sleep disturbances and overcome nightmares through lucid dreaming. So the first thing to know about nightmares is that despite the nasty wrapping paper, they can be creative healing gifts. 
and this section explores the many ways that lucid dreaming can help us to explore our nightmares and extract meaningful gifts from them, such as insight, inner resources and wisdom. I'll share my lucid imaging nightmare solution and practical techniques for lucid nightmares, as well as discussing post-traumatic stress disorder. We'll look at how lucid dreaming can help children who suffer from nightmares and we'll consider whether it's best to hug the dream monster or attack it. My love nightmare empowerment technique emphasizes the importance of listening to children and helping them to find their own path to a happier dream life. Children are incredibly fast learners and through lucid dreaming and lucid dream play they'll quickly learn the skills of of dream intelligence, which are empathy, mental flexibility, intuition, self-awareness, and understanding. This section closes with a look at the positive role um, that lucid dreaming could play in a variety of sleep disorders. Um, I'll explore REM sleep behavior disorder, sleep paralysis, night terrors, lucid sleepwalking, narcolepsy, and sleep-related eating disorder. And we'll see how lucid dreaming could help sufferers by triggering them to wake up when an episode starts uh, or by resolving any underlying trauma that's involved. I'll also examine sleep paralysis as a gateway to lucidity and I'll give practical tips for releasing fear and moving into the experience with calmness and curiosity. Part four of the book looks at lucid dreaming for healing and well-being. All dreams come to help and heal us. Even the tiniest dream snippet or the most mundane sounding dream can release insights if we take the time to work with it. In lucid dreams, we can work and play with the dream while it's actually happening and allow it to lead to deeply healing experiences. So this section explores the power of lucid dream therapy for psychological healing and looks at fears, anxieties and phobias and the way that we can work with them and with, in lucid dreams in ways similar to virtual reality exposure therapy. But is lucid dreaming any use if we have a bad back or a headache? Dream actions have a physical effect on the body and lucid dreamers may be able to influence unconscious bodily processes uh, like subjects in hypnosis. So we'll investigate the possibility of healing physical pain and illness through lucid dreaming. And I'll give you tips for optimal lucid dream healing. Then we'll step beyond what science knows and we'll look at examples of the lucid dream healings of other people. So I'll look at successful and less successful examples of lucid dream healings and I'll ask how this could work on others. There can't be enough authentic attempts to help others and attempting to heal another person in a lucid dream is a strong way of focusing compassionate intent. Part five of the book looks at extraordinary lucid dreaming for connection and oneness. So the surface of the ocean sparkles in the sunshine and enchants us, but it's only when we dive beneath it to explore the depths that the adventure truly begins because this whole underwater world is revealed in all its mystery and glory. It's kind of the same with lucid dreaming. You know, we, we get so dazzled by lucid dreaming at first that we want to experience more and more of this cinematic sensory imagery. But there's a deeper way of exploring lucid dreams, a way of diving beneath the surface and letting go of all that imagery and to reach something really powerful and very different. So this section explores the depths of lucid dreaming. It kicks off with an investigation of telepathy in lucid dreams. I'll raise the viewing tube problem of consciousness exploration and I'll look at scientific research into dream telepathy. Then we'll go into the area of out-of-body experiences or OBEs. Now, these can arise from both waking and sleep states and I'll share my rainbow theory of consciousness and I'll examine neuroscientific studies on OBEs. I'll also look at the differences between OBEs and lucid dreams and I'll share practical tips on how to release fear and embrace creativity and light. Staying on the subject of light and bodilessness, I'll then take you on a trip into the sparkling black void 
and I'll show you how to find the grace and luminosity of the lucid light. Now this is what I consider to be our baseline state of consciousness and the bedrock of reality. My lucid light theory of dreams and reality shows how lucid dream experiences where we enter a bodiless, imageless state provide us with the fastest possible route to an experience of interconnected oneness. Then we'll look at the ultimate experience, death and its related topics, such as near-death experiences and also how lucid dreaming can help the dying and the bereaved. The section finishes with an uplifting look at living life as a dream with practical help from my Alive Code for Reality Creation and how to live a happier, more lucid life. I'll reflect on the future of lucid dream research and on how lucid dreaming helps us to do something that sounds easy but can seem so elusive. Wake up in our lives. I think there's something for everyone in this book and I really hope that you enjoy reading it. Thank you very much.